Today there is talk of war everywhere. Everyone fears a war breaking out between the two countries. If that happens it will be a calamity both for India and for Pakistan. India has written to the UN. Because whenever there is a fear of conflict anywhere the UN is asked to promote a settlement and to stop fighting from breaking out. India therefore wrote to the UNO however trivial the issue may appear to be. It could lead to a war between the two countries. It is a long memorandum and it has been cabled. Pakistan's leaders Zafrullah Khan and Leo Khatali Khan have since issued long statements. I would take leave to say that the argument does not appeal to me. You may ask if I approve of the union government approaching the UNO. I may say that I both approve and do not approve of what they did. I approve of it, because after all what else are they to do? They are convinced that what they are doing is right. If there are raids from outside the frontier of Kashmir, the obvious conclusion is that it must be with the connivance of Pakistan. Pakistan can deny it, but the denial does not settle the matter. Kashmir has exceeded the accession upon certain conditions. If Pakistan harasses Kashmir and if Sheikh Abdullah who is the leader of Kashmir asks the Indian Union for help, the latter is bound to send help. Such help therefore was sent to Kashmir. At the same time Pakistan is being requested to get out of Kashmir and to arrive at a settlement with India over the question through bilateral negotiations. If no settlement can be reached in this way, then a war is inevitable. It is to avoid the possibility of war that the Union government has taken the step it did. Whether they are right in doing so or not, God alone knows. Whatever might have been the attitude of Pakistan, if I had my way I would have invited Pakistan's representatives to India and we could have met, discussed the matter and worked out some settlement. They keep saying that they want an amicable settlement, but they do nothing to create the conditions for such a settlement. I shall therefore humbly say to the responsible leaders of Pakistan that though we are now two countries, which is a thing I never wanted, we should at least try to arrive at an agreement so that we could live as peaceful neighbors. Let us grant for the sake of argument that all Indians are bad. But Pakistan at least is a newborn nation which has more ever come into being in the name of religion and it should at least keep itself clean. But they themselves make no such claim. It is not their argument that Muslims have committed no atrocities in Pakistan. I shall therefore suggest that it is now their duty, as far as possible, to arrive at an amicable understanding with India and live in harmony with her. Mistakes were made on both sides, of this I have no doubt. But this does not mean that we should persist in those mistakes. For then in the end we shall only destroy ourselves in a war and the whole of the subcontinent will pass into the hands of some third power. That will be the worst imaginable fate for us. I shudder to think of it. Therefore the two dominions should come together with God as witness and find a settlement. The matter is now before the UNO. It cannot be withdrawn from there. But if India and Pakistan come to a settlement, the big powers in the UNO will have to endorse that settlement. They will not object to the settlement. They themselves can only say that they will do the best to see that the two countries arrive at an understanding through mutual discussions. Let us pray to God is to grant that we may either learn to live in amity with each other or if we must like to let us fight to the very end. That may be folly but sooner or later it will purify us. Now a few words about Delhi. I came to know of the incidents which took place last evening through Brikashan. I had gone to the camp for the evening prayer. I came away after the prayer but he had stayed over to talk to the people in the camp. There are some Muslim houses at as little distance from the camp. About four or five hundred inmates of the camp, mostly women and children, but also some men, issued out of the camp to take possession of the houses. I am told they did not indulge in any kind of violence. Some of the houses were vacant. 
Some were occupied by the owners. They tried to take possession even of the latter. The police were near at hand. They immediately went to the spot and brought the situation under control at about 9 o'clock. According to the information I have, the police have stayed on there. I understand they had to use tear gas. Tear gas does not kill, but it can be pretty painful. I am told that something has happened today again. All I can say is that is a matter of great shame for us. Have not the refugees learned even from their immense suffering that they have to exercise some restraint? It is highly improper to go and occupy other people's houses. It is for the government to find them shelter or whatever else they need. Today the government is our own. But if we defy our own government and defy the police and forcibly occupy houses the government is not likely to continue for long. It is still worse that such things should happen in the capital city of India where there are so many ambassadors from all over the world. Do we want to show them the spectacle of people occupying whatever they can? It is all the more regrettable that women and children were used as a shield. It is inhuman. It is like Muslim rulers keeping a herd of cows in the anguard of the armies to make sure that the Hindus would not fight. It is uncivilized, barbaric behavior. It is still more barbaric to put women and children in front to provide against the police making a lathy charge. It is abuse of womanhood. I must humbly ask all the refugees, women and children, not to behave in this way. Let them settle down. If they don't, then apart from a war between Indian and Pakistan, we may kill ourselves in mutual strife. We may lose Delhi and make ourselves the laughing stock of the world. If we want to keep India a free country, we must stop the things that are at present going on.